troubles that we were having with him getting um, getting him out with the goats and the sheep and it it's our fault so basically it was just kind of a culmination of like a perfect storm of things so first and foremost when we first got him it was still pretty cold outside pretty rainy and snow and cold rain and so I wasn't putting the goats out as much as they weren't going out every day so he spent a lot of time just hanging out in the barn with them and then the one time that we did get him to go out he actually ended up getting shocked by the hot fence and getting through it so between the two of those things the fact that he just never went out and then of course the one time he did get out he got hit by the hot fence he was pretty apprehensive about going out on his own he just he wouldn't go out on his own he would literally stand at the barn door and whine while I let the goats out so I know that he wanted to go out with them obviously but he just you know he just couldn't bring himself to do it because he was you know frightened and 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 most LGDs or at least um, Great Pyrenees which is what he is they're actually pretty sensitive when it comes to things like that you know they it, a lot of it has to do with because they're so smart you know if they get rammed by a, a doe or you know a goat or you know even the cows like he got headbutted by one of the cows he literally refuses to go anywhere near the cows so he they're very smart and they learned very quickly and so of course with that he learned very quickly that outside meant pain <laughs> so uh, what we decided to do was get a kennel for him so we just bought I think it's like a four by ten or something like that it's six feet high kennel and it has a top on it and we decided that that would be the best way to get him out on pasture you know we could put him out there with the goats lock him in it for now and then once he is used to being out and we're not having any problems or anything like that then we can open the door and he can actually use that as his sort of little sanctuary so what we're planning on doing is blocking up the door so that only he can get in there and the goats and the cows and stuff can't and that way he has a place to go, you know, to get out of the way of everybody, to hang out and, you know, just to be, to be safe. Like I said, it'll have his food in there, it'll have his water in there, and it has a little shade over it so that it'll be, you know, like a shady spot that he can kind of move. And then we can move that with him to each of the different paddocks. So um, we're gonna get that. We just came here earlier, so Ryan and I are gonna get that built and then we're gonna get him out there. We'll see how it goes.
one being terrible and ten being great, he was probably a six or a seven. He uh, he he fought me a little bit, but once he saw his goats and you know his herd, and he realized that you know I wasn't going to murder him <laughs> taking him out there, he actually did okay. So he is in his kennel. He's laying down in the shade, and he's got his food and his water, and he seems pretty content. I don't think he's terrified. He wagged at me, you know, so I don't think that he's too traumatized by going out there and he's not whining or anything. So we're gonna check on him a couple of times today just to make sure that he has, you know, enough shade and he doesn't have any issues. But I think that went pretty well. And uh, yeah, that didn't go as bad as I thought it would. I thought it was gonna be a lot worse, but it seemed okay and he's out there. And I think this is gonna be the best way to get him out on pasture, hanging out with his herd where he needs to be, where we want him, where we, where we intended, you know, when we got him. So there we go. talked about how we do the deep, med deep bedding method for the barn animals. So for the goats, for the cows, um, actually we've been doing it for the dog too. <laughs> um, it's really nice to do over the winter, especially here where it does get quite warm. It helps to heat up, you know, from the floor. So now that spring is getting close to us, we are getting ready to muck all of that out and put start a new layer of bedding for them. So the nice thing is, is we only do this about twice a year and um, it doesn't get too, you know, it's not too much work, but it's enough that it is quite an all day project project to get this all cleaned out. So right now we're working on mucking out the goat stall and then we'll probably tackle the cow stall um, in the next couple of days or so. But it's gonna be a big project. The nice thing is, is this makes some beautiful compost that we can put aside for next year's garden. Uh, we did this at our old place in California and it's simply amazing. It's beautiful once it composts down, the chickens scratch through it and get all the bugs and stuff. And they're actually already in the stall scratching through, get a picture. Uh, scratch <laughs> said to me he just said edit this video so it looks like I'm doing all the work meaning he's doing all the work <laughs> yeah that's exactly what happened <laughs> what happened was I offered to take a pitchfork and she said no I got it I got it I said, you're only doing that so it shows that you're doing more work on camera and then she said yeah well I'm editing it so I can make it look like I'm doing all the work anyway that's not what I said I said oh, I can make exactly it look like what whatever I want whatever I want what I meant was that he was doing all the work. I could make it look like he was doing all the work. <laughs> she just turned the camera on, so all the work that I did while I was off is not going to be shown. But we're going to give the pitchfork to Sarah now, since the camera's on, and so now Sarah can do all the work. Haven't you guys missed him on the last two videos? Isn't it, hasn't it been boring without him on these videos? See how much fun we have when he's around? That's what happens when he's sick. <laughs> Then he comes back full of spitfire. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the camera on so you can see how much he's working. See, see how much he's working? Well, we're not done with the stall by any means. We're probably about 10% done, but <laughs> we had a little issue. So we're gonna have to stop because a pitchfork just does not work very well with three times. Especially when two of those three are the outer ones. Yeah. That was also the most amount of work I've ever done for the least amount of... Effort? No. no. The least, least amount, amount of, of 
accomplish. Gain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It was a little. It was a little rough. I'm not sure. It's usually not this hard when we do deep bedding. Um, it's usually not this much work. I'm not sure if we just ended up adding. There we go. That's. Oh, hey, look. Wait, we can't smile. <laughs> Anyways, I'm not sure if it was just because one, there were six goats and a sheep in here. Usually we have a bigger stall for everybody and they kind of separate out or we ended up adding bedding probably more often because it was so cold this winter. So it's a lot deeper than what we normally deal with. So we're gonna figure out a plan for next winter and possibly either put them in a different stall that we can do this with a tractor or I don't know, maybe muck it out more and that way we won't have as much work to do. But anyways, uh, we'll finish this up later. The girls are awake, so we're gonna head in for the day and pick this up in the next couple of days. But we made a little bit of a difference and uh, we'll, we'll shoot for tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks for following along with us today, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.